this video we're going to focus on the expansion of slavery west. And basically the question that we need to answer is going to be, should states that enter the Union be free or slave? That's the big question that we're going to be answering through the look of expansion of slavery and why they want to expand. Now, the North and the South will debate this to the point where um, they're going to go to war, and it's going to be called the Civil War. Now, it's not just about slavery, though. This is also going to be about power of, of government and how much power each side has. Now, it's going to be a, a giant conflict between states' rights and federal power. So how much power does the federal government have to tell states what to do, and how much power do states have to protect their rights underneath the Constitution to stop the federal, power, federal government from making them do something? We've already seen this happen with um, Andrew Jackson in the force bill, and we saw this already happen with the nullification process that South Carolina is going to use with the the uh, protective tariff that Andrew Jackson was supposed to get rid of but never does. And so they're going to nullify it, which he's going to make them, through federal power and force bill, comply. So the conflict between states' rights and federal power it has been going on since the creation of the Constitution and will not stop even today. So it's very delicate situation. Right now in government in the 1800s, there is... Um, a balance of power there are equal number of slave states and there's equal number of free states so this balance is going to be very very tricky to keep um, there's equal number of slave states and equal number of, of free states, which means that there is an equal number in the Senate. And for each side not to have a hissy fit on one side getting more power than the other, this needs to stay equal. It won't. We already know that if you're viewing this as a review. <laughs> it won't. Um, now, the view on the expansion of slavery... Everyone thinks that the North is completely against slavery, and that is not true. Not all Northerners want to end slavery. The North, if you remember, is very, very reliant on slavery. Um, they earned money off of it. Through shipping either raw materials um, that they're going to use. And the merchants are going to make a ton of money off of slave trade as well. Even though slave trade in the 1800s is going to be banned, it's before when um, slave trade was legal, they are making a ton of money off of it. Um, they also were making um, a ton of money off of industry because they had because the South was able to supply cheap raw materials to keep industry strong, well, and give them a lot of money. So if the South can provide cheap raw materials to the North, the North can use those raw materials and to make a ton of um, money off of the industry. The number one raw material they're selling them is going to be cotton, and the number one um, industry is going to pop up is going to be the textile industry. They're going to um, basically be the first industry to actually do anything. And they're also, they feared that if slaves were free, that they would take jobs up north. And they don't want that whatsoever. So the north is not all about getting rid of slavery. It's not until after the abolitionists kind of expose what slavery is about that people start to question the institution of slavery. But abolitionists are going to be a, are going to play a major role in this. Let me move this up a little bit. Now, abolitionists, they are not very liked in the South. 
they viewed slavery as morally wrong. And it should be abolished. But abolitionists were not well liked up north. They had a very, very, very small population at first. Population, it was mostly in the north and the south. Now, a lot of the South, South, South abolitionists will move to the North. The Grimke sisters are great examples of that, where they were born in the South, they had slaves, and they left to move up to the North to be the abolitionists that they wanted to be. The North did not want to be associated with abolitionists because most of them were women, and they didn't view women as very smart and respectable people in society. So they didn't like that. But the, the main three that we need to know about are, let me flip the page. Are William, there we go. Lloyd Garrison. He is going to um, be the publisher of a newspaper called The Liberator. It's an anti slavery newspaper. Um, He is going, it's going to be very popular in the North, and it's actually going to be banned in the South. So you can get arrested if you are seen reading it in the South. Um, Harriet Beecher Stowe. She is a housewife from Connecticut, and she is going to write a book called Uncle Tom's Cabin. Which was really about, um, is an anti-slavery book. And it was it exposed the reality of slavery. She is going to expose how um, slave trade is done and how families are getting ripped apart and the the horrible treatment that slaves were being um, exposed to every day. And this is going to shock the North. This book, which was widely read in the North, very popular among women saw the reality and they they were shocked and kind of will go towards the anti-slavery movement. They won't turn abolitionists, but they'll, they'll start to see slavery as morally wrong. Um, it, just like anybody, if you don't see it, if you don't hear about it, if you don't expose yourself to it, you're not going to realize what slavery was actually like, and that was the case here. Um, and this, people are going to be really angry over the fugitive slave law after this. Because the book talks about how a guy is going to escape and he's going to get captured and brought back and that kind of stuff. Um, another abolitionist that you need to know about is John Brown. He is a little eccentric. He is a radical abolitionist. Now, when we say radical abolitionist, that means um, that he is going to use violence to expose slavery and to get the what he feels like is justice for them and the only way he knows how to do it is through violence he wants to spill blood to promote the anti-slavery movement William Lloyd Garrison and Harriet Beecher Stowe chose the pamphlet route and to educate people about it he doesn't feel like that's going to be enough he wants to um use violence with it. He's going to be a key player in the Kansas-Nebraska Act where Bleeding Kansas is going to happen where the anti-slavery forces and the pro-slavery forces meet and um, will fight and shed blood over it. And he's also going to be known for what's called John Brown's Raid. Is going to happen at Harper's Ferry. And he really, truly believed that um, it was a... Well, he's going to seize a federal arsenal. And arsenal is where they keep all the weapons, right? So when he's going to seize the arsenal, he, his thought is that all these slaves are going to just come out of the woodworks and follow him. He's going to arm every slave there ever is, and then they're going to go and shoot every white person that they find and stage a revolt, basically a slave revolt, and it's going to fail. 
um, because he's going to seize the the arsenal, but no one came. No one came to get the guns that he thought that they were going to do. And so when no one showed up, his plan kind of unraveled. So it's going to fail, and he is going to um, die. They're going to kill him by hanging because he's going to get arrested. All of his sons are going to die. He's going to get stabbed and he's going to get arrested. He's going to be trialed, tried on treason. And in the South, um, now in the South, they're going to view him as a terrorist. Terrorist. And he's going to die justifiably on their side. And in the North, he's going to die as a martyr. Martyr where you die for a good car cause. And so when the North sees him die, they're going to see him die as a someone who died for a good thing. Now, this whole thing, they're, the North is terrified because of John Brown's raid and what he did. And they were terrified that slaves, the slaves were going to revolt. And so they're going to put stricter slave laws in place to keep them from revolting. Now, the South is really, truly going to believe that... Um, now, we have Northern's view that the slavery and how they feel about it. The South's view of slavery is that it is a positive good. We talked about that in the last video about sectional differences. And um, the South is really going to believe it's a positive good. They're going to take the slaves and they're going to give them homes and food and a family and a place to, you know, live in a better life. Whereas in the, you know, Africa they were in tribes and weren't doing very well. Or they could be in, um, in the North with the immigrants basically failing and living horribly as well. So, to be honest, like, they thought it was possibly good because slavery was their economy and was their way of life. Without slavery, their economy and their society would crumble. So, real quick, as a little review, um, states... The question is, should they enter the Union as free or slave? And we're going to talk about that in the next video, actually. Um, the, they're going to debate that. The conflict is going to be between slave rights and federal power. In the 1800s, there's a balance of power, and they need to keep that equal specifically in the Senate. And all northern states don't want to abolish slavery right off the bat. They earn a lot of money off of slavery, either through raw materials like cotton to fund their textiles or through shipping the raw materials to other places. And they were also feared that they would the slaves would take the jobs in the north. The abolitionists... They viewed slavery as uh, ooh, sorry as a um, uh, morally wrong and should be completely abolished. They had a very, very, very small population in the beginning. And they're also going to be found in the North and the South. And the main three that you need to make sure you know about is William Lloyd Garrison. He's going to write the anti-slavery newspaper called The Liberator. It's banned in the South. And if you're found reading it, you can get arrested. Harriet Beecher Stowe is going to write the book, anti-slavery book, um, Uncle Tom's Cabin. It's going to expose the reality of slavery. And it's going to anger a lot of people. A lot of people are going to be angry over the Fugitive Slave Law because of that book. John Brown is a radical abolitionist. He's going to use violence to get his message across. He's going to complete a raid at an arsenal at Harper's Ferry where he wanted to arm every slave to um, revolt against them. He really, truly believed that God set him to this earth to do this. He wanted to be, you know, the African-American's Moses. And... Um, he failed, and he's going to be tried for treason, and South is going to view him as a terrorist, and the death will be justifiable, whereas the North is going to view him as a martyr, which means he died for a good cause. The South is going to be very terrified about slave revolts, and so they're going to put stricter slave laws in place because of the John Brown's raid, and slavery viewed it as a positive good in that slavery was their life, and it was their economy, and without it, they would crumble.